Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror comedy film, Scare Package. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In the middle of the road, Mike attempts to fix the directional signage of an abandoned, insane asylum. Seconds later, Mike hears a car coming, so he immediately hides behind a tree, while the tourists stop at the signage. The tourists are confused because the campsite is on the right lane based on the map, but the signage is pointing to the left. After deliberating, the tourists drive on the left lane, which disappoints Mike. Following that, Mike vents to his friend about his job as an actor, who is always the side character. He hopes that one day he will be the main character. The following day, Mike is at another job on Halloween day, where he accidentally cuts off the power supply in a house. So the babysitters take flashlights to find the breaker box. Mike suddenly appears at the back door, causing the babysitters to scream in shock. Mike immediately lies that he is a neighbor, and he just wants to check if his neighbors experience the blackout too. The babysitters are suspicious of Mike and realize that Mike is the one who cut the power because of the tools hanging on his waist. So the babysitters come up with a plan. They let Mike inside the house. One babysitter excuses herself, so the other distracts Mike to get the pliers in his pocket. After that, the babysitter attacks Mike with the pliers, but Mike dodges the attacks. Suddenly, the babysitter stabs Mike's right hand. Mike screams in pain as the babysitter pulls out the pliers. The babysitter yells for her friend and then attacks Mike again. But she slips from the candies on the floor, causing her to stab herself in the neck. Meanwhile, the other babysitter comes down with a knife. She slowly walks towards Mike, who is pulling out the pliers from his hand. When he finally pulls it out, he accidentally stabs the other babysitter. The babysitter gasps in pain and accuses Mike of killing her friend. So Mike quickly explains what happened. Then the babysitter attempts to pull out the pliers, so Mike warns her repeatedly, but she does not listen to his smelly bullshit. So Mike wears a mask just in time, as the blood spurts out towards his face. The two babysitters fall onto the ground, while Mike looks like a serial killer with the knife in his hand. Suddenly, the door opens and Mike's cop friend shoots him, because she does not recognize him. So Mike takes off his mask and explains himself. However, she still puts Mike in cuffs and leaves the crime scene. The scene changes to Mike in a car with a man named Chad. It turns out that all that happened was just Mike's short film about horror movies, entitled Cold Open. Chad says that Mike's work is confusing. After that, Chad drops off Mike and drives to his video store, where he rejects a customer named Sam, who wants to be an employee. Moments later, a short man named Han applies to Chad, so Chad quickly interviews Han. Within seconds, Chad hires Han. Afterward, while Chad trains Han, Sam interrupts them to rent a videotape, and Sam describes a movie entitled One Time in the Woods. It starts with the chubby man stepping on a disgusting goo, so he tries to get the goo off him. His wife is seen talking to her friend, while their other friend, Mr. Mustache, fixes their tent. Suddenly, a man runs towards them begging to be chained, because he says he will change into something dangerous. They do not think he is serious until he vomits, and his body starts transforming into a nasty green goo. Then the man's skin detaches from his bones, and his face slowly melts while vomiting blood. Despite that, the goo man instructs them to put silver on him for him to die. The girls try to find silver even though they are disgusted by the blood. Finally, Mr. Mustache steps in and puts a silver handcuff on the goo man, stopping the disgusting transformation. When Mr. Mustache puts on a mask, the goo man recognizes him as a wandering serial killer. So Mr. Chubby takes a small axe and taunts Mr. Mustache. Mr. Chubby's other friend shocks him, so he accidentally tosses the axe to the friend's smelly hot dog, causing him to scream in pain as blood squirts. The girls quickly run away, while Mr. Mustache hugs Mr. Chubby very tight, and crushes his bones until Mr. Chubby dies. After that, one girl attempts to get help, and a sharp branch accidentally stabs her mouth. Mr. Mustache sees this, so he throws a rock at the girl, blowing her head. The other girl quickly runs away and encounters a hunter. The girl warns the hunter to shush his mouth, but he does not listen to her. Mr. Mustache then shows up, cuts off the hunter's leg with his hand, and then beats the hunter with his own leg. Meanwhile, the girl runs back to their campsite, where the Kuman asks for her help, despite being only bones. Suddenly, Mr. Mustache comes running, he slips on the smelly goo, and falls right on the axe. After that, the girl helps the goo man get all his goo, but he suddenly bites the girl's hand. Within seconds, the girl also starts to transform into goo. The scene then changes into another horror movie entitled Mr. It starts with a bar man sitting alone in a bar. He chats with the bartender, who begins talking about blood, which creeps out bar man. So he leaves to go to the bathroom. While in there, bar man notices an advertisement flyer of an organization called Mr., which stands for Men in Serious Turmoil Establishing Rights. As bar man looks at the flyer, he reminisces arguing with his wife, who complains about his lack of effort and masculinity. 
Following that, Barman decides to go to a mister's meeting where he witnesses the leader giving a pep talk to four men about what it takes to be a muscular man. After the pep talk, the leader encourages the men to share their emasculating life complaints. One by one, the men share their emasculating experiences ever since they got married. After the meeting, the leader encourages Barman to join the organization and invites him to an exclusive event. Later that night, Barman arrives with a duffel bag at a football field where the event occurs. The leader faces Barman, and with a snap of his fingers, the lights go out. Barman watches the group transform into werewolves under the moonlight. Then Barman opens his duffel bag and kills the werewolves with different weapons. After that, Barman comes home to his wife's party. He shows the guests the werewolf skin and everyone puts on their black robes to commence a ceremony with a pentagram drawn on the floor. The scene then gets back to Han, who is busy working in the video store. Suddenly, Sam interrupts Han and intimidates him so that Chad will hire him instead. Han dismisses Sam and continues to work and he sees the feminist section of the video store. There is only one tape on the shelves entitled Girls Night Out of Body, which leads to the next story. It starts with a woman named Ray in a convenience store. Ray browses the aisles, unaware that a mysterious man is stalking her. While browsing, Ray sees a lollipop in the shape of a human skull, but it is not for sale. Then, as Ray and her friend leave the store, the store clerk realizes that Ray has stolen the lollipop. Ray and the friend get inside the car with their friend, who is the driver. As the trio leaves the establishment, a stalker follows them until they reach a fancy hotel. Following that, the stalker watches the girls having a party. Ray reveals the lollipop, and her other friends also licks it. The driver girl closes the curtains, and the friend suddenly feels strange, so she lays down and puts a towel over her face. After a while, the driver girl wakes up the friend, but they are stunned when the towel falls onto the floor. The friend's face is turned into a skull like the lollipop. Seconds later, Ray's face changes into the skull shape too. After that, the driver girl calls the convenience store for help, and the store clerk just laughs monstrously. Suddenly, the driver girl reaches for the lollipop like she is enticed by it, and licks it as the stalker gets near. After that, the driver pulls the stalker into the room, where they kill him, and they dance around like nothing happened. The scene then gets back to Chad still attempting to distract Han's work. Meanwhile, Sam continues to creep out, to pursue Chad to hire him. However, Sam's mother arrives at the store, so Sam has no choice but to leave. After that, Chad shares a horror movie entitled, The Night He Came Back Again, Part 4, The Final Kill. It starts with a couple named Daisy and Gray, who are getting intimate on a bed, while someone watches them from the ajar closet. Suddenly, a masked killer smashes the window and barges in to stab Daisy. Before the killer makes his move, Daisy's friends come out of the closet and they beat the killer until he is unconscious. Following that, the killer wakes up tied to a table, while Daisy and her friends surround him. Daisy expresses her anger at the killer for killing her friends and boyfriends every year on the 4th of July. So Daisy climbs onto the killer, while the friend hands her a knife. Daisy repeatedly stabs him, until her face and clothes are covered with his blood. After that, Daisy climbs down, and says that the killer might still be alive. Suddenly, the killer stabs Greg in the back of his head, which immediately kills him. Because of that, they proceed to destroy the killer with jumper cables. The boys attach the jumper cables, and Daisy quickly electrocutes the killer with a car battery. After a few minutes, Daisy stops the electrocution, so one of the boys checks the killer's heartbeat with a stethoscope. But then, the bolt of electricity from the killer's heart travels up the stethoscope, causing the boy's head to explode. However, the killer is still alive. In frustration, they decide to stuff firecrackers down the killer's mouth, and they watch as the firecrackers cut the killer in half. Daisy's friend picks up the killer's lower half, and suddenly its legs wrap around Daisy's friend. The remaining guy sees the killer's intestine, so he tosses it over the ceiling beam and pulls. As he pulls, the legs lift Daisy's friend into the air, eventually leading to death. Daisy cries, and the guy wants to comfort her with a kiss. But the killer suddenly comes to life and taunts them. So Daisy grabs a shotgun, and instructs the guy to unmask the killer. Hiding behind the mask is an attractive man rich in hormones, so Daisy hesitates to shoot the hormone-full killer. Then the killer chokes the guy's throat, but despite that, Daisy still cannot shoot the killer, so the guy dies. After that, Daisy finally pulls the trigger. Shortly after, Daisy shoves the killer's body in a wood chipper. The killer wakes up and reveals that he is Daisy's brother, but it is too late, as his body turns into pieces. After that, Daisy watches the fireworks display, while the killer's hand comes out of the pool of blood. The scene then gets back to Han in a room, full of drawings, numbers, and words. Han then sees a videotape, entitled, So Much To Do. It starts with an unknown person driving a car, while an unconscious man is tied in the car's trunk. Moments later, the person parks the car, and two mysterious men come out to drive the tied man to a gravesite. 
A few minutes later, the Tide Man finally wakes up and pleads to the mysterious men that he has so much to do. However, they do not listen to him, and one mysterious man removes his glove, revealing a mysterious symbol gleaming on his hand. The mysterious man puts his hand on the Tide Man's head, burning his forehead, and causing him to lose consciousness. After that, the mysterious men kick the Tide Man into the grave to bury him alive. Following that, smoke emerges from the grave, and it travels across the ground. Meanwhile, a woman is alone in her car parked in a nearby empty field. The smoke slowly engulfs the car, so the woman goes out to investigate. She can't see anything, so she goes back into the car to call for help. But unfortunately, there is no signal. Suddenly, the Tide Man appears in front of the vehicle and quickly evaporates into smoke, and the woman's windows break. The woman breathes in the smoke, and her windows suddenly reconstruct. After that, the woman says that she has so much to do, like the Tide Man's line. When she looks in the mirror, it shows the Tide Man's face. Afterward, the Tide Man comes home and watches TV. Suddenly, the Tide Man hears the woman's voice, so he finds the woman. When he looks in the mirror, the woman is standing next to him. The woman claims that the Tide Man has her body. Then, the woman fights the Tide Man over the remote. Surprisingly, the woman is so strong that the Tide Man vaporizes into smoke when she strikes him. The woman finally reclaims her body, but it is full of bruises. The woman shuts the TV, goes to her car. When she checks her phone, she sees that a friend spoils the TV shows she is watching. A short film ends as the woman drives away frustrated, but she is unaware that two mysterious men are following her. The scene then gets back to Han, hitting Chad at the back of his head with a videotape, which causes Chad to lose consciousness. Following that, Chad wakes up in a room with six people, and Han comes in, wearing a lab coat with two bodyguards. Han takes a woman to be a subject in their scientific experiment. Shortly after, Han's colleague takes the woman to a treadmill to run, and then they bring in a serial killer known as the Impaler. Meanwhile, Chad identifies the other people with him as horror character stereotypes. Chad informs everyone that they are in an actual horror movie, but they do not believe him. On the other hand, while the scientist experiments, the Impaler overpowers his captors and kills them. Meanwhile, Han then informs the test subjects to run while vomiting blood. As soon as they leave the room, the Impaler throws an axe in their direction, killing the man who Chad identifies as the token black guy. They immediately run away because of that, with Chad choosing to be with the people he calls the girl and the stoner. At the same time, the security personnel witnesses a treadmill thrown to a doctor, so they go out and see the place in chaos. The appliances are broken, while the blood from the corpses makes a bloodbath on the floor. Meanwhile, the girl discovers that cars cannot start if the killer is within 14 meters of the vehicle. The stoner shares that the impaler used to be a good person, but he changed when a group of frat boys killed his friend. So the Impaler took off the frat boy's faces and wore them as a mask. After that, the trio sees a monitor and realizes a tracker on the Impaler. The monitor reveals that the Impaler is just meters away from them, so they immediately leave the room. Meanwhile, the man named the Jock helps the other girl named the Slut, who has a massive wound on her leg. As they wander the facility, the trio stumbles upon a celebrity and he helps them reunite with the Slut and the Jock. Afterward, all of them get in an elevator. Suddenly, the elevator halts, and a metal tube kills the girl. Chad realizes that the security protocol prevents the elevator from reaching the exit. The jock bravely gets out of the elevator and attempts to fight the Impaler, but the Impaler just destroys him. After that, the celebrity faces the Impaler, but the Impaler dominates him too. With his last breath, the celebrity whispers to Chad that he is a moron. Chad cries as his celebrity idol lays dead in front of him. The slut tries to escape with Chad, but Chad decides to stay and fight the Impaler. However, the Impaler just plunges his fist right on Chad's face, creating a huge hole and killing Chad. Meanwhile, the slut and the stoner finally escape the laboratory, which turns out to be under the video store. The stoner and the slut come up with an idea, as they know that the Impaler will appear. Following that, Sam returns to the video store and gets killed by the Impaler with an axe. After that, the stoner shouts at the Impaler and tricks him into thinking that he is the Impaler's dead friend. The Impaler reminisces his memories with his friend, so walks towards the stoner who he thought is his friend. But then, the slut comes out and electrocutes the Impaler, until he loses consciousness. The stoner and the slut immediately get into a car, but then they remember that the Impaler is within 14 meters, so the car does not start. The slut instructs the stoner to remove the Impaler's body. However, the Impaler wakes up and tears the stoner in half. The car finally starts, so the slut hits the Impaler with the vehicle and then flees. The following day, the slut wakes up, thinking that it's all a nightmare, but she sees that the Impaler is still in the car with her. The slut dodges his assault and runs out of the vehicle. The film ends with the sudden appearance of Mike, who tosses a cigarette towards the car. Mike and the slut run as the car explodes. 
This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.